the 360 million people with hearing loss, interaction with the world around them can be severely affected. There are, of course, methods to improve communication from sign language and lip reading to hearing aids and cochlear implants. But what if there was a way to allow people to feel the sounds around them through their skin, allowing people to hear through their sense of touch? I'm Dr. Joff Lacey, and I'm here in Texas to learn how a vest that vibrates in response to sound is doing just that. The Texas Medical Center in Houston is the home to Neosensory. This is the team behind the vibrating vest, led by neuroscientist David Eagleman. Hello, David. Hey, how are you doing? I'm Joff. Hey, good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank All you right. for letting us come and see your place. Yeah, it's, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. At the moment, uh, other mechanisms for helping deaf people hear, so a hearing aid or a cochlear implant, they exist. Now, how, what's the need for this? How does it differ from those options? For people who are profoundly or severely deaf, there's no That's use that they option. get from a hearing aid. Exactly okay. right. Now, what they can get is a cochlear implant, which is a surgery where you're essentially sticking electrodes into the inner ear. That is about $40,000 and an invasive surgery. Mm. What we've done is built this vest, which is really cheap, and you just strap it right on and you're good to go. I'm intrigued but slightly baffled <laughs> by this concept. Now, tell me more. Well, you know, the brain lives in silence and darkness in the skull, and it gets all this electrochemical data, all these things like your eyes and your nose and your ears yeah. and your mouth. This is just portals for gathering information from the world, turning it into electrochemical signals, sending it into the darkness of the brain. It doesn't matter how the brain gets the information as long as it gets it. We realized that we could, uh, we could send information in via other routes, unusual routes. And this is an area known as sensory substitution. All this terrific computational material of your skin is not really being used for anything. And so we realized we could send information to the brain via patterns of vibration on the skin. So what we have right now are lots of prototypes, and we've been testing different versions of the prototype on people from the deaf community. So, Joff, here is the vest. Go ahead and go Very ahead and put nice. this on. Thank yeah, you. notice it's a little heavy. Very this nice. vest, yeah, this <laughs> vest would be worn under your clothing, and okay. and the idea is. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on here. Oh, whoa! You can now feel okay. as I'm speaking. Yeah. The sonic world translated into patterns of vibration. What it's you really feel, subtle, though. It's, it's, love, it's quite nice. Exactly <laughs> right. Exactly right. And if you turn around, you can see there, there are lights all over. So we can see where the motors are active. There's 32 motors on this vest. Okay. And that, it turns out, is sufficient to communicate what we need about speech. As I'm speaking, you're seeing my voice here, all the different frequencies represented in my voice. And this is the vest. This is my vest. I can, I'm feeling all those vibrations when it lights up. Exactly. So what we're doing is we're breaking this up into frequencies. Every 12 milliseconds, we're saying, okay, what's the high frequencies, what's the low frequencies, what's everything in between, and sending that information. So each sound and word will have a different pattern of vibration on my chest. Exactly right. So in order to allow you to interpret what's going on here, we've developed a series of games that will train you up. So yeah. for example, the phone presents the vest with a particular word, and then you're presented with four words here. So I have to guess what that vibration was representing, which word. Exactly. Which. Uh, so at the beginning, you have no idea. It's no. totally random. So you feel it again. Now you get the next word. Okay. And you guess which word it was. Okay. Again, wrong. <laughs> again, wrong. Okay. By training um, every day, you'll get better and better at unconsciously understanding these patterns. That's got two right in a row. Yeah. <laughs> that was a coincidence, because <laughs> it was your first day. Yeah. By getting feedback saying right or wrong, you're picking up on all kinds of details that you can't comprehend consciously, but your brain's picking up on it. Jonathan is part of the team that is helping develop the vibrating vest. He has been using the latest prototype for the last three days. Jonathan, can I ask you about your hearing loss? Can you tell me a bit more about that? Sure. I'm fully deaf. I can't hear nothing. Call profound. Can you tell me what it felt like the first time you used a vest? It was just so, uh, there was nothing clear about it. It was just uh, all random motion. <laughs> it was nothing clear. I didn't understand any of it. 
Right now we're testing out our latest algorithm. I'm going to cover my hand over my face so he can't read my lips. So, cat, cat, right. So that's the sign for, that's for the cat. cat. Yeah. Okay. Dog, yeah, dogs. Hand. Yes! <laughs> there we go. Leg. He's got it. Mike's also been working on another game with Jonathan. We're trying to start working towards understanding full sentences. Yeah, ready? Right dog. Draw a fish. <laughs> Draw a fish. Nice. Draw a cat. <laughs> nice cat. <laughs> I don't quite understand how you've been able to come up with what's been said purely by the vibrations. Can you explain it to me? Right now, I'm putting myself in the zone and I can really concentrate on that. The goal with more practice and more experience will become more natural. One volunteer who is due to receive his vest today is 23-year-old Greg who currently relies on lip reading and a hearing aid to communicate. Kind of old wheel of Black River. Okay. Black River? Black River. You sure? It's not, no, not, not, not. Black to Peter. Hi, uh, how are you? Hi, Greg, I'm Joff. How are you? Nice how are you? to meet you. Nice to meet you. What was it like growing up with deafness? It was tough, I have to say. I remember at the age of five, I received cochlear implants. I had to have surgery back here, as you can see. And there's a magnet inside of my head, which is really strange. I'm not comfortable with that. Although you had the cochlear implant, it was a hearing aid that you've used most of your life. Is that correct? Before I was at the age of five, I had hearing aids. Now, I have about 80, 85% in my right ear. My left one cannot hear anything in it. Did you, in some sense, feel isolated by your deafness? It really depends. Growing up in the deaf community, there's no real isolation that you feel, because you have an interaction in social life. Growing up in a hearing world, yes, there's a strong sense of isolation. Most that, including myself, don't go out much. Socialize with hearing people. Hi, how are you? Hi, happy to see you. Can you tell me a little bit more about the challenges you face with your deafness and your everyday life? Really, sometimes it's just hard to communicate with people because of the sense of isolation and loneliness means deaf people are far more likely to suffer from mental health issues, such as depression and anxiety, compared to hearing people. It can also affect academic performance and leads to higher unemployment rates. Even amongst those who are employed, it's usually in less skilled positions compared to the general population. How are you feeling about today? Excited, <laughs> somewhat, more. And then, but more looking forward to trying new technology. And I'm hoping that's going to be able to help me. Hey. Hello. Oh. Looking good. Wow, nice. <laughs> How does it feel? It's not bad. Not yeah? Bad. How does it feel? It's comfortable. You look good in it. 
Yeah, thank you. I hope so. <laughs> we can go ahead and make the big move and take your hearing aid out and turn on the, the vest. So go ahead, yeah. Get rid of that. Bye, <laughs> Press, yeah, live audio. Can you feel it? Can you hear me, can you feel me talking? What? You can back up. <laughs> <laughs> what, what does it feel like? Complicated. Yeah? So I, I feel right here there's a continuous vibration. It sound feels like a drum. Yeah. Yeah. Right here. Well, but there is a there is an air con low a low pitched air conditioning noise. Mm -hmm. All right, then that's fine. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. really cool. Other word. Greg is one of ten volunteers who will be taking the vest home to wear for three months as part of the trial. So you don't need that. Yeah. Right. So that's what he told me. Yeah. So the rules are I can't wear the hearing aid. That's right. I returned to see Greg the next day to see how he's getting on with the vest at home. Greg. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you. Okay, let's go in. Thank you. Thank you. My family. Very too. nice face. So you've got the, the vest on now? And still no hearing aid? No. Uh, nothing. It's actually much easier to understand people now with the breath. The proper is very accurate. Then I, not more accurate than the hearing. The tone of the people will vary from person to person. So you more, will more vulnerable higher in the mirror. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, it goes all over different places. Just all different words that were speaking to me. How are you actually understanding what I'm saying? You're just looking at my lips and feeling the vibration of the words? Vibration takes sound from you. Yeah. Well, I look at your face and read your lips at the same time with your face expression that help me match word for word as much as possible. And you can feel the sound of the wind. The wind? Yes. Wow. I can feel the sound of the car. Wow. You can feel the yeah. of the car going by. Sound is much more easier to yeah. try to hear. If I had the bad growing up, yeah. probably would have been much more naive to socialize more with people growing up. The best would be a great way to Bang the bridge between the hearing and the deaf world together.